Welcome everyone to the Innovix podcast. I am Olena Prohorec, your host. I am musician, musicologist, and head of product at Pomelody, which is Polish ad tech startup, where we are pioneering early childhood development through power of music. Today, we discuss an amazing topic, uh, how music education can revolutionize life sciences. And joining us today is Datsa Dimsa Jones, head, uh, deputy head of Northern Powerhouse Life Sciences, Biotechnology and Pharmaceuticals Innovation Hub. Hi, Datsa. Nice Hello. You. Thank you, Alana, for having me. Thank you so much. I think Datsa brings a wealth of experience in driving innovation in life sciences. And I am personally a big fan of music i am in music all my life for early years but still i am totally amazed but by how powerful it is and um, of course we know that impact of music is um, isn't something new and uh, we uh, it is a big big part of our culture. However, I dare to say that music education matters now more than ever. And I don't know if you agree with me. Uh, can you please share your experience? What is music for you and how it influenced your life? Thank you so much, Olena. Uh, I'm, uh, I think I can uh, describe myself as failed musician. And uh, I enjoyed uh, studying music academically for about eight years um, from family where everyone plays musical instrument. I had three pianos in my house, but I decided yeah. that uh, my family went the more creative uh, career paths, whereas I decided I'm going to be more scientific. But it doesn't really matter because uh, music plays a really significant role uh, as part of my everyday life. And I know that you already introduced me, but maybe I can give a bit of introduction about my role because my official role is very, very long and it doesn't always make sense what I do. But um, my work is I'm trying to attract innovation across life sciences. So it can be digital innovation, it could be innovation through music, drugs, uh, electronic patient data to north of England. So in, uh, in England, I cover such cities as uh, Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds, Sheffield and Newcastle. They are all beautiful. And for example, Liverpool, that's the birthplace of Beatles, Manchester, Oasis, and other fantastic bands. So it is uh, it is fantastic to serve this community and bring innovations in that will help people to get better, healthier, wealthier, and change their lives, and change the lives of the next generation. But going back to your question is that I gave some thought about the music and I think sometimes music works better than drugs and uh, any other m medical intervention. And this morning I, I watched a really nice view, video about the digital company that are uh, intervening with music uh, with patients who suffer from Alzheimer disease and dementia. So um, it was wonderful to witness such a big impact of music. And from my own experience, I can say that uh, we talked about kids not being well at the beginning of the podcast. And whenever my children are feeling poorly or about to get ill, a little bit of lullaby and cuddle can do such a massive impact. And I think sometimes we underestimate uh, underestimate the power of music and uh, I think again if we, we this is something that we as a scientific uh, creative community need to showcase uh, the difference that music can make and it's it's in a, you know you don't need special cover for music you don't even need music instrument to heal with the music you just need that wish and actually go back to your initial instincts as a human being to use what's right for yourself and family. Uh, totally, totally. And it's for free, Olena. It I, doesn't I, cost I, any money. It's for free. 
So that's another wonderful <laughs> benefit. Free, yes. And it hasn't any like side effects, bad side effects. So it's amazing. Just good side effects. <laughs> that's true. And you know, and my experience is because I am, I have these two sides of my music life because uh, I um, had this traditional path of classical musician so I started my piano classes when I was four and it was really so stressful so till the age of 13 I was suffer from such big anxiety because you know no pain no gain you shouldn't make any mistakes and it was very very pushy and I uh, never lost my love to music just because of my country's tradition. I'm Ukrainian. And in Ukraine, we have very big connection to music and to land. And I remember uh, when, uh, as a kid, I was helping my grand grandparents at the field to gather, I guess, or plant potatoes. And I hated it so much because, you know, it's hard work and it's boring and my mother uh, suggested okay let's sing and you know it was just a song and it helped me so much yeah. survive this boring process of everyday life and of course I till now remember her, her lullabies yeah. and impact to me it, and it doesn't matter that her voice wasn't perfect because yeah. you know her voice and every mother's voice is the most powerful tool and the most loved voice ever for a child even if it's not perfect so i i am totally agree the power of music is amazing and it's really weird that nowadays we have to talk about this right and to remind people that you know music is great to use it for your stress relief anxiety self-regulation and uh, there are a lot of uh, studies showing us that um, when mom is singing her lullaby to the child they pulse just like st is, um, stabilize simultaneously and it's it's just what you know you should take drugs for it normally but exactly and that's amazing. Um, and it's weird that our ancestors understand that music, understand, understood music power, uh, and uh, they used it for first communication with baby, for language development, for movement development, for uh, just growing up, just development uh, and brain development as well. Uh, so um, what I see, it's like difference between how formal education is doing this. And it's very interesting that we are not talking at music, uh, in mu at a music academy uh, about therapeutic power of music. We are talking about this only in, you know, um, music therapy department, not in every department. But it's weird because we are... Uh, music academy uh, preparing future music educators and you know they should be aware of how big impact music has and I don't remember any classes of how music impacts brain etc. I think Olena it may be that for many people the good thing that music brings it's common sense and then there may be a group of people that doesn't believe in music and they need really good evidence to justify that people who sing 20 minutes a day, you know, their blood pressure comes down, you know, the happy hormones uh, um, are coming into their body. I, I think it's very much about two groups of polarized groups of people that one people don't really need explanation. They're just going to incorporate the music as part of their everyday life. And then there are those, though, I need to see evidence that it's actually work. But going back to your beginning of uh, your story is interesting because I'm Eastern European. I'm originally from Latvia. And actually one thing that I didn't like about growing up uh, at the late 80s was that, again, I started music lessons at age of five, slightly later than you, but you had to be really good. So it was like, uh, sometimes it was like 
being in prison because I had to train to play piano for two hours a day. You had to be technically really, really good. And it didn't matter that you were good at composing, but if you failed at being technical, then you are not good. And I remember I'm still fighting with my mom because she's music teacher. And when she formed a choir at school, there were just only good kids that sing well, that were able to be part of this choir. Whereas I'm really amazed about the UK because I have two kids and it doesn't matter that they sing out of tune or they're not so musical, but they can take the part of this community of singing and it doesn't matter that they're not technical. So I think I'd really like to learn from the UK experience that anyone can sing and it doesn't matter that you may not be opera singer or, you know, Oasis or I don't know, uh, some other really, really famous person that you can get the enjoyment. But what I really wanted to talk about, we talked about babies and how important it is to sing. And I witnessed that when I was singing to my, when I was pregnant with my second child. And I sang the same lullaby every night for my first one. And when the second child was born, whenever I sang him the lullaby, he fell asleep so easily because I think he observed that sound of music when I was expecting him. So it's so, so important. Then again, what's quite important in my culture is when someone passes away, we have funeral traditions quite strongly rooted in our community. So we sing songs. And I think it's really, really important to uh, kind of go through grief. And what I see in the UK that specifically for mental health and grief, people nowadays don't know how to grieve. And I think that's why we see a lot of mental issues that someone dies or the, the relationship don't work out. And we cry about that for 20 minutes, couple of days, and then we kind of sweep that under the carpet but we don't grieve properly. And I think music could be really, really important part of grief. And then again, culturally, it's very shaky time of the world geopolitically at the moment. And I'm really, really sorry, Olena, what your country is going through. But my country also has been occupied for so many years. And we even have songs that we sing when we were occupied and where there were war, yes. and uh, it kind of, you know, uh, makes us singing the two minute song to come together as a community and makes us really, really stronger. And what really fascinated me, I had a business meeting in my embassy, Latvian embassy in London. And we went to meet the ambassador and you know what happened at the end of the meeting? We all, there were 20, 30 people. We came together in a big room. There was piano and we sang. And this is something that I have never experienced in any other business meeting. Yeah. But we sang and it was incredible. Yeah, it's such a big connection. It brings such a big connection with people. So totally, I so much agree with you. And when, you know, two and a half years ago, Russia um, started full-scale war uh, in my country, I remember this this amazing boom of songs everywhere. Everybody was singing. People need this. It's just so important for our mental health. So, yes. Yes, uh, that's true. I want us to move to the next topic because we really have so short mm, uh, time. We don't have a lot of time, do we? <laughs> okay, so um, let's move to the um, cognitive development in early childhood and how music can um, impact it. Um, there are so many research now uh, about how music impacts our brains from the very early childhood, even in, in uh, gestation uh, period. And we know that when a baby is born, uh, their brain has about 100 billion neurons. And as they grow, the neurons form connections, and these connections called synapses. And it very, very much depends on what they are experienced. So that's how we learn all our, our basic skills like language, movement, and of course, music, if we expose to it. So um, it's really very important to 
provide parents with this information? How do you see this? How can we do this? How can we ensure everybody, hey, look, this is so beautiful, where it should start, where the place is where it should be taught? Again, I think it's something that uh, I think, in my opinion, comes your, from your family roots. But what really scares me at the moment is that the new generations, they are so attached to technology, social, not techno technologies are not bad. And I think we need to empower technologies uh, in a proper way. But what I get scared is the influence of social media and uh, the algorithms that determine our neurons and the way how we think. And I think it will, for the future, the scary thought is that it will make us a little bit as robots. And if we won't go back to our roots and interact with the music that I think is part of our DNA, will prevent us to be more creative in the future. And specifically now in the world where AI, AI is, you know, winning. It's quite important that we keep that creative side away. And actually, Olena, can I just ask you a question? And this is about the music. And I'm so sorry, I'm diverting of the original uh, topic. It's about multitasking because uh, what I see in nowadays that people are not multitasking is probably, you know, there is different opinions about multitasking, but specifically in my world as a mother, I need to multitask and I don't like it, uh, but I have to because I have to cook at the same time. I look out, I need to look after kids. I need to make sure that house doesn't burn down. And but what I find that uh, I think if you play certain musical instrument, if, if you are interactive with the music, uh, it helps you to develop skills of beat better multitasker and I will give you one example which I witnessed when I was about eight years old and uh, I my mom played uh, piano and she played piano when other kids were dancing she was like I don't know what's the English name for it but she was like piano player and I guess I don't know <laughs> but uh, yeah I did it in my life also it, uh, and rhythmic in our uh, yeah and in Poland and what really shocked me was when I saw her. So she was reading, uh, she was playing piano. She was using her both of her hands, then the pedals. But at the same time, she was able to read newspaper. And then I thought, oh my goodness, this is just amazing. And there must be something in her brain that allowed her to read the paper, play the piano, and use all four of her limbs in coordinated action. And then it made me wonder that maybe actually uh, it makes us more, you know, uh, builds us more multitasker as a person. But then again, I think music also helps us to be more resilient. And this is the skill nowadays uh, that I see across my colleagues and friends that there are not many people that are able to be resilient. And uh, I would love to work with more companies, organizations that are bringing music, therapy, uh, AI solutions together to build the resilience of the next generation. Do you think we can do that? That's what we are doing at Formality. We're trying to combine all three. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, it's very important to understand that music is so beneficial because it develops whole brain, not just specific area of it. And very important thing, what we are doing at Pomelo, we're trying to persuade families that music making is crucial. It's not listening to music, it's also, it's very nice. You know, you will build your uh, music vocabulary. Uh, you will know a lot of styles, genre, and cetera, and cultures, it's amazing. So listening to music is amazing, but what is crucial is active music making music training and it's really what makes the change it's not enough just to listen just to learn about music because we are so amazed 
about some uh, famous musicians, but we all are musicians and Asian cultures know that because you should create music to hear it, to listen it, to enjoy it. Uh, and somehow we lost it. And we, in our application, in our everyday life, that's what we are doing. We um, try to persuade parents that First of all, music should be part of your family because the child developing the best in the natural environment when he or she felt safe and uh, feels felt. Oh my gosh, sorry. Uh, you know, this uh, baby, mm, baby children till like long period of time, they feel if they feel safe if they feel loved, this is the most important because it was not right. that if children are criticized because they are not good enough, what is very, very normal for formal music education because you're never good enough. Uh, so it really impact, uh, it really impacts self-esteem and our mental health. So it's very important for family to nurture this musical experience and it should be musical experience active yes. performing doing creating the music so and, that's and, and, the way we become more creative we just create so and Olena, i wanted to ask you uh, or tell uh, when i watch my kids jumping on table and singing their hearts out i think for that 15 seconds when they are, you know, in the music, in the rhythm, I think they're feeling like absolutely rock stars. I think yeah. their hormone levels, the good hormones go up and they, there is no difference between them and Freddie Mercury. It's just that, that, that moment when they, I think it's just so, so healthy. But going back about um, maybe 21st century and the problems we face, we talk in the UK quite a lot about the neurogenerative uh, uh, neurodiversity that uh, is represented across different ages and stages. But I think about um, now, um, you know, 20 years ago, and even I don't think still um, in some of the Eastern European countries, we recognize such as such conditions as autism or uh, learning disorders or hyperactive behavior but now we recognize these conditions more and more and more and I wondered from your perspective what music uh, what music what kind of difference music makes on uh, neurodiverse people so across really, ages really important because uh, we are working uh, started work in the field uh, connected to autism spectrum disorder and um, we received such a lot of messages from parents of autistic kids uh, about how big impact music has on their development and sometimes they're mm, telling us that without music they simply couldn't communicate with their child so just unbelievable so uh, what we are trying to do is to create such a rich environment for uh, like sound environment for uh, these children uh, neurodiverse uh, because um, sometimes they have this very big sensitivity to sounds and they are so different so they really need diverse uh, choice about, of a musical stimuli as and it should be uh, entertaining also it should be nice and beautiful not only for kids but also for parents because parents shouldn't struggle because of the kids music you know sometimes it's just harmful to listen to some kids songs on youtube which has billions of uh, views and what we are trying to do is to treat them with respect and to create really good peace uh, and just try to personalize it. If somebody don't like mm, violence because they have, have meltdowns when they hear this frequency or can't um, 
listen to some animal sounds, for example, in audio stories, we would not uh, include it. We will like check what do you like, and you, we will um, we will try to um, make it good for you. But what is m even more here, we um, we found out that music is not only good therapeutic tool because it's quite well-known thing. We are using it in hospitals uh, and of course parents are using it because it's sometimes the only thing that works. Uh, but also what we found uh, find out is that uh, music is also a great uh, diagnostic tool because yeah. like looking at the reaction, how child reacts to some kind of uh, sound stimuli uh, audio stimuli will show us what's wrong, the problem. And I uh, interviewed a lot of diagnostics and therapists and they're uh, fascinated by mm -hmm. how reaction to music can tell a lot about child and autistic children very, very often react differently, very, differ very often they not reacting to some sad or happy music. They are not bouncing to music. They are not showing any mimic reaction. But in other way, they are reacting to some weird sounds that we as uh, neurotypical uh, brains are not like uh, hearing. For example, the fly uh, in the room or some um, mosquito or a zip sound or some like paper sound, something like so nuanced and they can be anxious about it. They could have meltdown because of it. And it's so important to be aware of this and also use this power of uh, music a diagnostic potential, which is not so popular, I guess, uh, in the um, um, autism spectrum disorder um, diagnostic. It, maybe you know some examples how it works, because in I did a research here in Poland, and it's really not a tool for diagnostic. No, it is. Uh, I, I don't think it's uh, officially validated, but I'm again, I'm not expert within this therapeutic area, but I'm glad that you mentioned about music and uh, autism uh, because you I know that we had conversation at the beginning of the week and you just mentioned about these disturbing sounds and it made me think a lot about some of my family members explaining why they so sensitive to sound and it just uh, suddenly started to make a sense uh, and this is something definitely I would love to discuss with you more but then again I, I going back to music uh, what else is quite quite important is that um, I think uh, I came to the UK about 16 17 years ago with ability to speak English but then again music was so, so important for me because music doesn't need translation. And it helped me to bring myself together with the local community and actually helped me to survive in the environment that I really didn't under, understand. But then again, controversial question for you, Elena. Mm -hmm. How about, you know, total soundless environment? It's fantastic that we have this opportunity to wake up and fill our morning with birds sing, uh, songs. Then uh, we sing, we express ourselves. But again, do our brain need total blackout of sound of music? No, John Cage uh, researched it uh, and he, he remember this uh, study when, uh, which he did uh, in totally isolated room and there is no such thing as total soundless environment. We exposed to the sound all the time and our ears, they have no rest at all. So even if we will like do this, you know, we will hear how our body sounds inside. We will hear the blood you know, is circling in our body. So there is no such thing just like 
so I, fascinating. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't honestly, I didn't know that. But I have another personal question for you. This really fascinates because I asked this question to a lot of my friends and colleagues. Uh, music also can be very uh, strongly connected to sleep and the way how we sleep and the way how we dream. Yeah. And Olena, when you dream, do you hear sound in your dreams? Because not many people do. Uh, when, like you mean in my dream? In your, when you dream, when you are asleep. Yes, and do you do you dream actually? Yeah. You know, my husband is a musician and composer as well, and he can hear some pieces of music in his head. And as well, me too. I had this experience when I had. Yes, I have sounds definitely in my brain. And you're now, really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I guess it's normal, uh, but uh, you don't, you're not experienced this. No, of... I am. I, I think I'm among those really lucky people that I can hear sounds, I can hear the language. But I have talked to many of the people that sometimes they even don't see color in their dreams or they can't smell. And uh, yeah, so ask. It, it's very interesting. Uh -huh. Ask around your uh, friends and colleagues, and you will find that it's uh, not everyone is lucky to have beautiful, colorful, sound-filled, uh, sound-filled dreams. But then again, what's quite important, and that has made me to think about us as a human, is that we've got five senses. So we have, we can hear, we can see, we can taste, we can touch, and uh, what is the fifth one? <laughs> smell, 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 smell. <laughs> so, and sometimes I think if we even lose uh, one sense, if it's smell or hearing, it has such a big impact on the way, on our well-being and on our health. And then I wondered to I, I wanted to ask you because in the UK there is large proportion of children and grown-ups that unfortunately they can't hear. And uh, we've done quite a lot of research and we're actually looking at the preventive ways how to identify children when they are still babies uh, that they will have difficulties to hear. But is there any elements of intervention that we can still make people who have hearing impairment to enjoy music? There are some kind of implants. I'm not a big professionalist in it, but I read this very interesting study on how that people the children uh, can develop their uh, language skills, and if this implants uh, will be um, implemented till the age they are six or seven, I guess seven, so they have all the opportunities to develop this uh, normal language skills, just like their normal hearing peers, and if it is done two years later, like when they are nine, imagine that they have zero possibilities to develop their um, language skills in proper yeah. way, you know, and it, it's really fascinated that we have this um, windows for yeah. development, for to develop some kind of skills. Uh, and if we will not activate these neurons, if we will not build the synapses, so it just our brain will kick out them and we will never have the possibility to rebuild it, which is amazing. And I think it's also connected very much to our previous topic, yes, about music development and how can we ensure parents that it's, it's very important. Uh, telling them about this sensitive periods, about this windows for development. Uh, so if, for example, maybe they could uh, dream in colors and sounds and just because they are like, uh, hadn't this environment, this, this, this experience, they are like, just have a colorless and soundless dreams, which is, you know, okay. It's not crucial for survival, but anyway. Yeah. It's or interesting to dream when you have all the experience. No, exactly. Uh, and of course, there are much more. Um, I think the easiest way for parents just to um, observe their kids, it's very important because I found out in this 
in interviews I met with uh, ASD uh, specialists, uh, they um, communicated this problem that uh, very often parents couldn't answer the very basic questions of how their children react to sounds or to other stimuli and it's really weird that people don't know very often how to observe their children properly so their reaction to music how they're balancing how they're answering to their name is very important it so it is some red flags uh, which can Mm, inform us that something is wrong and it's so important because if uh, we should do this so early to make the therapy uh, most mm, how to say most uh, effective effective yeah <laughs> I'm not using my English at all in everyday life so it's oh uh, don't worry your English is amazing I, I wanted to ask you, maybe you have a couple of advices for new parents. Uh, let's say that uh, themselves, they totally music naive. They've been brought in environments when they're, as a children, they were not uh, exposed to music. They don't know how to sing or they are too embarrassed to sing to their new children. What are maybe three steps? of encouragement, what they can do to be more connected with their kids and utilize music as a tool to bring family together. And maybe even, you know, improve their little one's uh, health and mental well-being. Yeah, so first thing I will advise is to um, guarantee a rich musical environment in your home. So just listen to diverse genre and styles of music, uh, classical, folklore, jazz, kids, just do not limit your child experience and your own experience. And very often uh, I, I suppose, uh, I'm so sorry, Elena, to interrupt, but I suppose it's like with the food when you have a baby okay. and when you introduce okay. as much as you can uh, put in front of the yes. child at the very early stage. It, it will prevent them to be fussy eaters and be more healthier. So it's safe with the music. Yes, and it's a nutrition. It's, nu it's for your brain health, uh, as well as food is for our biological health and our body. So uh, totally, and also mm, food as well as music. It's very nice uh, analogy. I like it to compare. Um, very often I meet parents who are listening to this kids music only because they have kids and they have YouTube and they used to think that kids music should be like that, like primitive and very limited. Uh, so then uh, we are talking at Formality about uh, giving your child only sugar all the time. Yeah. Of course, child would love it. He will be so or she will be so excited of eating it and as well listening to the music because parents say, mm, OK, but my child is reacting good. He's smiling. She's smiling. So this is enough. No, it's not <laughs> enough because it very much depends on what kind of a uh, stimuli you presented presenting it's crucial for the brain development it's not so easy um because you know we will talk probably a little bit later about the biology and how music is connected to biology uh, we are out of time totally but i think that they <laughs> will add it so it's this but you know what it. it's 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 so so fascinating and i think now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna delete baby shark if we've got this song i don't know if it's popular in poland and oh, popular ukraine i will i will delete it from my and uh from yeah. my uh my uh, list of spotify but then again going back i'm just thinking all the parents hate that song but they play that to their kids That's and why people are doing it question why <laughs> are you playing a song which is which you hate it's painful yeah. for your brain it's really painful so they cannot can't stand this music but they will Mm, put it uh, put it on for their child because they think it 
should be like that. So first thing is to guarantee that to create this rich musical environment and to listen to diverse musical genre and styles. Uh, second thing, I promote singing to children. It's just the very important for your connection, for your bonding, for your health, both for yeah. child and your health as mother and as father. And uh, it, it's crucial because it stays with them for whole life. It gives them self-esteem, it gives them mental health, this, this just um, psychological stability they have this basis, they feel that they can rely. And it's very, very important. Uh, I have this experience uh, with connection between my husband and my daughter, because he used to talk to her when she was in my belly. <laughs> it was so funny. And he was talk to her like every day. And they have so nice bond from the very beginning. It's just unbelievable. And uh, we know from research that children used to hear when in 18 week of gestation, and then they can recognize their mother voice among yeah. other voices uh, just after they um, born. So, you know, it's amazing if they experience this voice, of course, because if you're not talking, not singing to your baby, they have no this opportunity. And uh, it's not because they are not musical babies. No, they are, everybody is. Uh, so it's very important. And I guess the last thing, because I see such a lot of people with um, some kind of musical trauma and they have this push or they have like two uh, uh, types of thinking. First one are pushy parents and then has have this hot housing thinking of that they should push, they should listen to Mozart as early as possible, at least two hours per day, because Mozart's music should be his development and uh, blah, blah, blah. And also at the age of two, they should decide what musical instrument they should play. And it's better for them to go to the stage and to perform with orchestra because that means that they're uh, talented and they can make their um, career. But like one type of thinking. And second, they're not considering music as an activity for them at all because they have this... Um, perspective that they should be musical, that they should have talent. And it's only for unique, they cannot sing uh, in a tune, so probably they are not good enough. And this is our two very often uh, uh, types of thinking that I uh, meet in parents. Uh, and what I want to say is music is for everyone. You should like leave your uh, I know it's very hard because trauma is trauma it's hard to just say okay I'm not traumatized at all uh, and let's do this differently no I can't understand that uh, but mm, that's like what we are also doing we are trying uh, to ensure them if they will mm, just change the perspective just change this their thinking it already will be enough for their child to benefit from music education like um, it is very important uh, to have this rich and diverse musical environment it's very important to sing but it's also very important to have active musical training so going to classes having this clapping uh, yeah. game very important it's I read enormous amount of studies about how rhythm development uh, boosts our brain in whole, uh, our whole brain. It's just amazing. And you know, in later years, it can um, postpone dementia, Alzheimer and Parkinson's. It helps uh, if a person is already diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, RSS, rhythmic stimulation can, um, can change like it's I know it's like moment uh, just for a moment but it can um, help them 
to feel your body, to move properly. And, you know, it's a big, big change. So you're taking away uh, your the opportunity from your baby to develop whole brain if you are not um, exposed to musical training. And musical training is also crucial, very, very um, important, but not musical training uh, in pushy way. And yeah. like we shouldn't think that child should uh, at this early age should uh, decide what instrument it wants to play. It's nonsense. You should give them so much uh, possibilities. Uh, they could they should try play violin, play drums, play brass, play good uh, instruments, play piano. Difference, but first of all, you should start with your body and with your voice because your body and your voice is your first musical instrument it's very very important to use it so no that was a, that was a, you know such a educational insight and inspiration also for all of us and i don't think uh, there is age limit when you can start to enjoy music or start to play new musical instrument what sometimes worries me is that um, how affordable it is to be a musician or future musician because um, I remember when I grew up uh, we, we, we had uh, I played piano my sister played flute uh, my mom played violin and at that time for us it we had to decide you know, it costs money to buy instrument. And here in the UK, uh, back home, the musical education is funded by government. But here, it's uh, if you, it's usually in the school, you get limited uh, amount of uh, exposure to music lessons. But then again, let's say if you want to play guitar or piano, you usually hire a private teacher and it costs money. And then you have to pay instrument. And it's not really affordable for everyone. And sometimes it could be just the wealthiest families can afford send their child for lessons. But do you have any, let's say, cheap alternatives where we can start without uh, needing to invest a lot of money? I think technology is very much helpful here. And diverse music application for music education, and they are important and parents can use them at home environment. But as well, we have, an, I guess, everywhere and at the UK, in UK, for sure, uh, this early music educational classes. Uh, so it's very important to go to such classes. They are not very uh, expensive, but even if you have no possibility to um, go to such classes, you can just create this environment at home because it's really very natural. Just uh, use some types from like in our application, for example, we give you types, we give you this online, cl online classes of how to sing song with your child, how to make this activity. And it's so uh, funny for us to do this because we think it's so uh, natural and it's nothing to talk about but it's really matters and parents are writing us oh where when will be the new activity because we, we are playing to it we are like put, uh, putting on the television and we are singing together with you they don't have this um, self-esteem to use music as a natural language they have this like Kind of trauma that they are not talented enough and it's very very um, sad because it's they are limiting their uh, child's experience so i think technology is really good answer to that because the price for uh, subscription is really cheap and yes it's true that musical instrument can be it, it is it not can be it is very um, pricely and it, especially if you want to be a professional musician. So I know people who sell their houses to buy their children <laughs> some kind of musical instruments. And so that's crazy. But uh, we are like, let's suggest that we are talking about everyone and not only about professional musicians. So there are a lot of these cheap instruments, but also everything is music. And uh, we promote very much in our classes, uh, using of, for example, 
pans and spoons, uh, wooden spoons or metal spoons. Or oh, that's beautiful. Yes, and you know, you could use everything. So and I think, use your and I think sound, yeah. like pans for sticks or claves. You know, it's um, you shouldn't have this really expensive instruments to experience music uh, activities. So, um, I think another really beautiful thing is when children being taught to make their own music instruments from every every day. Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah, we call it rubbish. You know, the empty box of something yeah. filled with rice. Mm -hmm. and, and my children love it. They absolutely love it. And they made it themselves. Of course, yes, you can make shakers, you can make different. There are plenty of uh, DIY proposals uh, on YouTube, and we also are doing this in our app as well. So, showing that you don't need um, expensive instruments to enjoy from music because it's, it's, it's really. Of course, if we are talking about musical training here, we need something more. We, we need some kind of interactions uh, with the visual representation of music as well. So um, I think in, in this topic, government, the one who need to help children to for, to er, for every ch child to um, have this access to good musical training and at schools it shouldn't be like classes about music it should be musical classes because very often they are not musical classes and i think olena it's really important in those areas who where people are not wealthy and uh, where there is problems with behavior or um, attitude I think music can make such a big positive impact for, you know, for everyone. Yes, that's I think true. we are approaching the end, aren't we, of our discussion? Yeah, we didn't discuss a very important topic of biotechnology innovations. I would like just to, you know, it's very interesting topic because um, this mathematical constructions in music and the impact on frequency and this research of frequency and how they impact our brain and how our brain, how biology of our brain are responding to that frequency, that we are the neuron connections that um, creating in our brain, they are the same frequency that we are like listening to. This is amazing. And I just wanted to ask you, do you have, do you can sh maybe you can share some insights or some innovations you uh, found, you hear, um, how music have been used to influence biological processes? You know what? Actually, not that many that I can name because uh, my uh, the companies I support, they're very much uh, pharmaceutical biotechnology. But from music side, I do have companies that we have supported and it has been more on the... Uh, people who are exposed and uh, they that they have to spend their time in care homes so bringing the aging population together bringing community together and yeah. apparently it has been proven to be really really effective for dementia alzheimer's and parkinson's patients so that's one of the examples but i think the area of innovations music uh, uh, neurology it is something that will thrive in next 5, 10, 15 years. And actually, it's really big niche for innovators to come up with solutions and innovate uh, within this area. Okay, thank you. I think we should finish because we're out of time. And I would like to thank you very much for being here with, with us. I would like to thank for Innovix team for um, promoting, for organizing such uh, valuable discussions. Uh, and I want to thank our guests for being here with us. I hope you um, found something interesting for you uh, and about musical impact on your life. So may the force of thank you. be with you. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank you.